Now let's see how we can use gunicorn to serve this Django server. Because itself the way Python manage node power run server is not the preferable preferable way for the production. For the production we need to use gunicorn or the use skill I believe so. So we need to install it install gunicorn. I'm also going to put this gunicorn inside my requirement of THT file. And now I need to run this via gunicorn. So I will try it. Okay, you can see that when I run it with ggunicorn, I can see any static file being served. So I just cancel it and it says that no static file served. I run the same with this manage.py server and I can see that you can see the static file. But this is not the right way to serve in a Django application. So we need to use ggunicorn. But to serve the static file, we need to use Django. We need to use Docker. Okay, now we need to create a docker container. So let's create a docker file. Docker file. Okay, here we got our docker file. Inside this docker file, we need to first import an image from. This is basically being imported from the docker hub. You can go to docker hub. Let's say that. Docker, okay. Docker Hub, I actually always write Docker spelling wrong. So, here with me, and here we can search Python. There are different Python official Docker images, and you can use any one of them according to your need. But I'm going to use a light image, just few MB. I don't want to need pull all of the large Python image, so I will use Slime Buster from. Python 3.8.13. This is I'm going to use then slim because it is a slim bust slim buster. Okay, you can also see it from here. Maybe you can use which one version you want. Simple tag. Just copy this tag. If you want 3.10.5, you can copy this. If you want 3.10.5 slim bulls eye, you can use this. You can use which one of the tag you want. Okay, I am going to use 3.8.13 Slim Buster. Then I need to define a work directory. This is the directory where all of my files are being stored. And one thing I would like to recommend you to install this Docker extension. And I can show you later that what is the benefit of installing this Docker extension. I am creating a work directory as slash app. And now I need to copy all of my files from my app to this app. As I have defined my work directory as app, so if I do this way, it will copy this inside the my app. Okay, scratch this value of copy. The next I need to install the pip and pip install dash dash create. I'm not I'm going to update the pip and then I'm going to no cache because I don't want to make my docker image large size because it was storing caches in ch okay the next I need to install this requirements dot text file and one thing I can do is that I can even copy this requirement dot txt file inside my app so when I copy my app inside the app, I cannot. This will automatically copy this requirements.txt file. So I can do run it install dash r, and now our requirements.txt file is inside this app because we we have defined our app as our working directory. I 
I'm not sure what is the spelling. Maybe I would check the spelling. Okay, it's correct. Permanent store txt, you know, cache. Okay, now I need to run this via without ggunicorn to just show you. Okay, if we want to get our web uh, outside of this docker, we need to define it as 0.0.0, .0, which means as everywhere. If we define it as local host 127, then it will reside inside only the docker. We can't access, access it outside of the docker. So this is our docker file is ready. We have imported the Slim Buster image file of Python. Then we have defined a working directory. Copy the content of my app to this work directory. Update the pip version, install this requirements.txt file and then when then and now we are going to run Python 3 manage.py run server 0 0.0.0 8000 is basically the code. So I need to run docker build tag and I am going to call it as my image. And where this docker file is residing, this docker file is outside this my app. So let's go back one step actually. Now we can see that uh, that our docker file is inside the current directory. So we can do docker build minus t and then dot, dot define dot mean that that docker file is in the current directory so let's run it, run it again okay i have i forgot to define the name of my image my which is actually my image so it will take a couple of seconds to run this docker file and just wait for that so that this docker file is being run and see if there is an error uh, meanwhile I can also write this ggunicorn okay we have misspelled the cache so I need to correct it again and now I need to run it again. This is now installing the packages from the requirement file. Okay, now our Docker file has been built, and we can see it here that our Docker file is there. The image is there. My image, the image has been built. Now we have to run up the container which we can do it as docker run minus p port 8000 to 8000 and the name of my image which is basically my image okay docker spelling And now let's try what we got. Uh, look like okay. If I'm I can't cancel it right now because I the con con container is being running. If I press Control C, nothing happened. Oh, maybe stop. Sometimes it doesn't stop. So I need to expose the port. I think so. And if I run it again, okay. This is now running. And now you can see that we have. A lot of container we can just click and remove it from here and we can even use a uh, docker ps docker ps and there is a list of containers and there is a list of inactive containers we can remove all of this container because we are not using that 
and I don't look a lot of and it look like a lot of things so just we can remove it from here we can also remove a lot all other thing at once though I don't recommend to use this command because this will remove everything but just for simplicity I'm going to prune everything okay system prune dash dash all okay so just we have just one container because that container is being running we need can manually remove that okay we can also remove a image no no problem okay now i need to you can see that there are colors being shown because we are not using ggunicorn but when we are going to use ggunicorn we can't see that we can see that our we can see that our static files are not being served with the ggunicorn even in the docker file okay now you can see that with the ggunicorn inside the docker we can't see the static files now let's view something inside this my image inside my image container inside this container that is angry wise something like that we have app which we have defined in work directory inside the app we have main app and sub app because we have copy all of the content of the my app inside this and we can also see if i can move it down we can also see the requirements.txt file here this is what I was going to tell you that if you install this docker extension you can view inside your containers this is the end of this docker with the python and now we will see the nginx in the next section